All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We turn our focus now to athletics. In a riveting interview carried on the Sports Max Zone on Tuesday, veteran track and field coach Glenn Mills shared his thoughts on the team Jamaica's performance at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Among the many things revealed by Coach Mills was the need for Jamaica's track and field governing body, the J3As, to revamp the way they prepare for relay competitions. There's no doubt that if we want to do well in the relays, we have to have this relay squad. The, the squad has got to include the top and not limited to, because the second tier persons um, must be um, taken into account. Because you never know when the top person is not available for an injury or whatever, and you have suitable um, replacement um, thing because the, the replacement don't have to be a nine five person because yeah. if you have a good um, nine let's say you you have a nine eight man who is out and you have a man who can run sub ten and he's a good and love the button and, and a good turn run etc he fits in and, and you get results just as good yeah. Yeah. I mean when when you look at um, Canada. Um, they have that squad been, been going for quite some time. Another country that puts forward financial support specifically for relay running. Mm -hmm. Yes, and Britain, um, Zanel, actually he got hurt in the 100 um, thing. Mm -hmm. And um, when I said to him, look, call it a season. And, um, and, and let's get back to rehab and so on. But they 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 he they, they have their good the medical thing and they work on him and then give him the necessary treatment and x-ray to see and thing and he was back in 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 thing within two days and he was excited to run why because although he didn't um do well in the flat um he knows in the relay he has a big check coming so that can be in there. <laughs> and so it is it, not by accident he ran um, co fastest time yeah. in, 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 in the thing. <laughs> so, yes, we have to go that route um, thing. Or else, um, from not getting medals to not representation, the whole thing is breaking down. Well, SportsMax.tv editor Leighton Levy, he watched the entire interview and he joins us now to share his thoughts. Good afternoon, Leighton. Good. Hi, Maria. What's up? Long time. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Leighton. So let me get your overall thoughts on what you felt, you know, after listening to the interview, um, of course, conducted by Ricardo and Lance on yesterday's show. Well, I said it to Ricardo right after. There should have been a two-hour special with Glenn Mills alone. <laughs> because an hour and a half was enough. Because he said some really interesting and very instrumental things yesterday Yeah. that I thought, I think, the powers that we need to heed if we are to, to get back to where we, I think we belong. Because as I alluded to yesterday, one of the things that there was a, there was a estimate somewhere between 9 and 30 medals at the, at the Olympic Games, we lost potentially three of those medals with Sherika Jackson and, and Shelly and Fraser Price being injured. But, in, but significantly, Jamaica did not pick up a single medal in the relays. Primarily because I don't think there's enough preparation. And as he said, there isn't a pool. And one of the things that I continue to be fuzzed by is the whole idea that the J3s don't seem to understand that track and field athletes don't earn a lot of money. So any opportunity that they will get to earn more is something that they will grab with both hands. However, they have not incentivized running relays over the past few years. In fact, they've never incentivized as far as I'm concerned running the relays. So obviously there's going to be a problem, especially when other countries are not doing it. And Jamaican athletes are becoming aware of what happens in other countries and where they're not being availed of those opportunities by our local local administration here. So he said a lot of things that was were quite instrumental. And if if people can take that information and not get into their fields about it, 
and start to understand that this is what the athletes do for a living, I think some change will happen. But they have to then start to adopt principles and policies that make sense. As, because this is a world where professional sports are exactly that, professional sports. And you can't bring an amateur approach to a professional sport. Not anymore. Yeah, Coach Mills also spoke late about his top sprinter of Leek Seville, who he says is not in need of any psychological help. Let's hear that. Look, you, you can look at it from both sides. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mills, and I don't disagree with him when he says that Oblique is a strong athlete mentally. But when you go to three consecutive championships and you finish fourth in two, and you, after running a relatively... He said it himself yesterday that he was running hard for that 91. So he would have gone into that final expecting to win or expecting to be at least on the podium and not having, not getting there. These things, regardless of how strong you are mentally, they will wear on you eventually because the, the confidence is very, very fragile. You know? It's a very brittle quality. It doesn't take much for it to be rattled. And after three consecutive global championships, when he himself would have expected to be on the podium and not been on the podium, as strong as he is mentally, the next time he goes into a global championship, the uncertainty will be there because you're not sure, will it happen to me again? So while Mills is not necessarily wrong in saying that oblique is as strong as they come, regardless of how strong you are mentally, when these things happen, they will create doubt in the athlete's mind. And if you create doubt in an athlete's mind, no matter how good he is, he or she is, Things can happen that will, from a, from a psychological standpoint, that can hamper performance. So I'm not saying that he's, he's wrong, but for him to say that he doesn't need or to suggest that he doesn't need that kind of help, I think is a little bit misplaced in thinking that the athletes, the athletes are human. And if, if, Ricardo, you play tennis, if you're going to a match and you're losing consistently, in, in situations where you're, not, where you're not expecting to lose. The next time you play, that confidence is not going to be there, yeah. regardless of how, how much you think of your qualities. So, yeah, I think, you know, we, we need to understand that it doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong with you to seek psychological help, especially when it comes to sports. It just means that you might need additional support. Yeah, very much the case. I appreciate that, Leighton. By the way, I only lose tennis matches to people ranked below me when Lance and Mariah turn up, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, Leighton, thanks very much for joining us. We have to get out of here a little bit earlier today than usual because we have women's CPL coming up at the top of the hour, so we'll catch up. No problem, guys. See you tomorrow. I'll be down here in the office. All right, All right. take care. Let's go to a break. Good we'll one, back. Ricardo. Good one.